Okay, so um, just one second. Yeah. So the first agenda for today, uh, the demo we had, the first thing I wanted to tell is that I have raised the PR for uh, the uh, blog post. And I'd, I'd like you guys to review it and uh, as soon as we can publish it. So um, apart from that, from the demo, what I'd like to discuss is uh, Oleg's comments. He, he was talking about, um, about the scope of our benchmarking strategy. And he was, he was, uh, he, he gave a suggestion that we should also consider, um, the depend as far as I could understand him, he, the dependencies upon which the Git plugin uh, works, like the credentials API, we should also consider them while we are benchmarking uh, uh, the plugin. Uh, so I'd like to discuss that because uh, I think this meeting, we can use it to plan what we uh, want to do for the next phase. And um, yeah, so first let's just discuss what uh, Oleg was saying, Mark. Uh, uh, I, I'm actually not, uh, I haven't explored the dependencies uh, of Git plugin. So uh, this much I could understand, but could you please explain more how we could use uh, his suggestion in our plugin, in our project? Yeah, I think, I think, so audio check first, can you hear me okay? I'm not sure if my, yes, my yes. internet's well behaved. Okay, great. So yes. um, the I believe his concept was that there's a higher level, or no, there's already in Jenkins a layer at which things operate, for instance, in a job. And you see them when you run a job. The output is there where it does a git version command, and then it does a git config something, and it does something else. And And I think what he was expressing is could that could we benchmark the aggregate of all those things together and get useful information with the intent of looking for things we could stop doing or do differently as as an example in the in the checkout process when you watch the 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 commands that are being being reported one of them is it's doing a git config so it's actually calling command line git and doing a git config that is an obvious target for a JGit transition so that we don't have to fork a process. Java is great at opening files, writing content to files. And so that's one of those places where, but it's not clear to me, would that actually help at all? It, and, and I think that's what he was looking to explore is, okay, is, is there an interesting difference if we were to put a benchmark at the level of of something above in a, a pipeline step, you know, so, so a checkout SCM, if we did a, a benchmark of checkout SCM in a pipeline and said, hey, let's compare checkout SCM for, for CLI Git and checkout SCM for JGit. For me though, the, the number of variables there explodes. It's, it's yes, even exactly. harder now to, to decode which are the significant variables and which are the insignificant variables. Uh, I, I think as far as I've uh, learned about, I've researched about micro benchmarking, the general advice is to micro benchmarking exactly means to, uh, I, to isolate to a single point in your operation and then uh, try to test it. Because if we are trying to uh, benchmark the whole operation, the amount of variables we'll have, the unknown variables, it's, that's something which uh, for that, uh, I considered that as well to, uh, to time uh, the whole process as well, because uh, so I discussed it at one of the meetings uh, about the scope of the benchmark, a big benchmarking strategy that maybe we could also um, uh, write something, write uh, some kind of benchmarks for the plugin, Git plugin as well, because that information might be more useful for the users because uh, the benchmark setting in the Git client plugin would be benchmarking the same operations and uh, there might not be too much change in the operation, the way Git fetch is working. So uh, benchmarking the same, the benchmarks just serve uh, the purpose for once that we, we benchmark them and we gain insights and then we use those results. But if we have uh, some benchmarks at the level of uh, the Git plugin operations, which would involve uh, uh, like the SCM check audit involves a combination of Git operations. So if you're able to benchmark that at each uh, build 
any developer creates at the with the master branch that would be very useful for that person if they're changing anything and uh, the performance is increasing or decreasing or if it's being affected by that but then uh, what at that meeting or what you um, the mentors uh, uh, we we decided that um, that would be uh, for the current scope it would be um, it's a, it, it could be something we could do once we achieve what we want to right now but right now that would that that isn't something we're looking uh, for so so if it's something we want to consider maybe we can um, but right now i think the current uh, issues we have it's first for an example first i need to um, uh the benchmarks i uh, do for the uh, for a single operation i need i need to be more confident that i am able to um, get good results and we are able to actually use those results in the plugin once we maybe we exhaust those avenues of uh, exploring single operations and we are not able to uh, find uh, any useful insight uh, to improve the performance maybe we can move up would that be a good strategy Okay. that that suits me just fine i'm still i i think i think you got it oleg's what i took from oleg's suggestion was if we had completed the other objectives that we had set we could go to a higher level i don't think that we've completed those other objectives yet and i think yes. there's much to be learned still in the in the in, at the level that had been defined so not not to discount i it's very dangerous for me to ever discount that genius that I work with, he is, he is a delight. I, Oleg is absolutely brilliant, <laughs> but um, it's, it's also, I think we had a good plan. Let's continue that plan. And as we learn more, we may then broaden it to say, oh yes, he's got the right suggestion. Let's go higher level. Okay. Okay, that sounds good. Okay, so uh, the second thing is, uh, apart from, the demo uh, we so we uh, the pr for the fix for the redundant fetch issue was merged but there was also uh, mark requested an opt in, opt out uh, global switch uh, which would be helpful for some of the users if if our logic is not correct so um, so with that before discussing the issue i i would also like to ask should we um, should we add any issue track should we uh, start tracking our issues with jira uh, why I say this is because um, uh, when we were discussing this issue, I I thought by mistake that when we are talking about the global switch, we are talking about the switch uh, which we will implement in the performance improvements once we have the performance improvement. So I was I was actually not aware that at the time when you asked by merging after the merging DPR that we need an opt out switch for this uh, fix as well. I was not aware. I forgot and I did not track it. So I was thinking, and also, uh, also one more thing uh, with this issue is that um, sometimes we discuss uh, what we are going to do. I raise a PR, but it's maybe not everyone is involved with the PR. So uh, for for everyone here to uh, follow what is happening with the issue and the subtasks, and if we have uh, people can go and update it, I can track uh, maybe track things better. So. Uh, it might be a good idea uh, to uh, to now for from the second phase uh, track the issues via Jira. But uh, if there's if there's any issue with it, if there's uh, something we'd like to discuss about it, uh, please. Yeah. If if, if if Jira, I love that you've suggested using Jira. That's great. And and if you think it will help you in any way, you have my wholehearted support. That's, I, I, I flinch because Git plugin is the number three highest owner of Git ish, of open issues in Jira. It's second only to Jenkins core and uh, the Maven plugin, no, and Blue Ocean. So, so it's, it, you're, you're, not, you're not helping my warm, fuzzy heart feeling that says, oh, I'm improving, the plugin's improving, but you're doing it, you're proposing a really good way to track our work. So that, that I, no problem, let's use Jira, absolutely. Okay, okay, Mark. So, uh, and with the, uh, so with the issue with the opt-out uh, switch I was talking about, so I implemented it and I raised a PR for it, Mark has seen it, but 
with uh, the implementation there is one problem and the problem is that it's not persisting for each build for one build i configure it and i uh, and i um, and i start the build it works the switch is working as it should but once the build is complete i again go back to jenkins configure page it's uh, the checkbox should be checked in if it's checked in for the first time but that's not happening so uh, i i did not get a lot of time to actually look into it do you uh, do you have any pointers for it mark do you do you oh okay is is it something in the code do i have to add anything else yeah i think i think if you were to do a side by side comparison between the the pull request that i just merged from bart devriant yes and I, I your saw pull that. request you'll see a very simple difference in terms of the api naming convention and that okay. api naming convention is all all the crucial thing here because it breaks the coupling between the user interface and the okay. getters and setters and and it tragically it's absolutely silent that the the connection is broken it just it doesn't show you oh i i tried to set something and java ignored me completely oh that's so I, I think it's, it's the fault yes Mark. yes you're saying something mm -mm. that's it so uh, i think the mistake is that i was confused with using redundant fetch or the second fetch uh, because uh, if we are giving an option to the users i feel that this we should not call it a redundant fetch because we it it is not redundant for them so it should be called second fetch but we were using redundant fetch for a long time so i i think i uh, i uh, redundant fetch is uh, so there's a confusion there in the code i'll i'll, I'll change it I'll, I'll look it up okay yeah Thank well you. and 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 but your your attention to hey we we don't rename things just casually is actually quite important. We haven't yet released the, the redundant fetch removal, so we can still freely rename things. Once we've released something, a public symbol in Jenkins becomes tragically and unforgivably part of the public API, even if you didn't want it to be. So your naming mistakes, my naming sins from four years ago are still very much in the, in the code. And they have to be, otherwise we break compatibility. So, so you, we, we, this is a great time for us to choose a good name, like allow second fetch and get rid of bad names. Don't be shy. Yeah. Uh, once we release, we don't get that forgiveness anymore. We're stuck. I understand. I understand that. Okay. Okay, so I'm going to do that now. Uh, okay, so after that, uh, I was thinking to uh, plan what we want to do for phase two. And, um, and also with uh, the planning, I think what I wanted to discuss was what we did right in the phase one, what we did wrong if, according to you guys, and uh, what we'd like to continue and what we'd like to drop. So something in, in that format. So let's start with uh, uh, what we, I think I'm not sure what we like. Let's, let's start with that. Uh, according to you guys, because uh, I think your, uh, a review is more important for me to move forward then i can give my review if that's important uh yeah mark so i i was delighted with your progress and with your engagement really thrilled uh, and excited to watch the progress excited to see the engagement uh very positive uh loved it and that it was done by code requests pull request by looking at code and by that and that you were willing to do interactive testing at the places where interactive testing actually was more effective I, I like that it's it's uncommon for a student to realize that interactive testing is actually sometimes the most valuable thing you can do at certain points in a project that's oh okay. but i want to write code no no sometimes we test so well done uh, well that's an important thing i uh, one of the important things i learned that uh, just writing a fix is not important uh, compatibility is is a is a very uh, essential uh, i would say thing to remember while you are writing anything for 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 a report, for a plugin or for a utility which is being used by so many users well I, I, it's a good it's a fair point that in different environments the compatibility requirements are different right if if you join yes. an employer that's writing linux kernel work they care much much more about compatibility than we even dream of if you're doing brand new blue sky code compatibility is not relevant go as fast yes. as you can yeah yes 
Okay. Justin? Yeah, I mean, I would echo Mark. Uh, you're very enthusiastic. Uh, you seem to take, take a task. We say take a bull by the horns, uh, <laughs> if you know that idiom. Um, so uh, it's good to see that, you know, you take, take stuff on, you do some research on, on stuff, present some options, which is nice. Um, it's good for us to hear. I think in any like software development project, it's good for if you're working on a task, you're showing the other people on your team the options. It's always helpful because they may come up with other things, but they may they also have a head start in thinking about the different options because you've you've given some of those. So that's nice. Uh, did a great job on the presentation, too. And thanks, Sexton. Thanks. Okay, Omkar, uh, would you like to say? Yes, sure, sure. So. Yes, I have jumped in pretty late for that thing, but uh, uh, yes, it is true. Yeah. Yep. So uh, till the time, like last four weeks, those have been amazing. Like your work, it's pretty, pretty, like more than pretty great. And uh, the yesterday's presentation was amazing. And the best part of you that I felt was like you are able to go with the approach. And if you find anything wrong, you are like uh, open enough to expose that uh, fault in the approach. That's the best thing that I've found till now. Yep. Okay. And thanks, I look forward you. to get engaged more with you with the phase two. And yes, and it's definitely, it's exciting. Yeah. Okay. So uh, let's, let's go for the um, issues, the, v, the problems with uh, you think, you guys think that I should address. That's, that's, that's the most important part. I, I, why, I don't know why I orchestrated this thing like this. I actually want to know what were my mistakes uh, when I was uh, during phase one, which I should uh, look into in the phase two. Uh, oh. some, some things like uh, maybe uh, the speed or the speed with which I'm taking tasks or maybe uh, um, the, the documentation part the, uh, the way I'm taking that, any any in any sense you guys feel. So one of my worries was that if we were as mentors, um, redirecting you a little too comfortably, that we were, hey, let's go off plan a little bit, a little bit because we think this other idea looks interesting and attractive. And and I wonder if as mentors, this is not not your fault. This is really a mentor choice where sometimes I am, it's very easy for me to get interested in the most recent shiny thing and and go after the interesting recent shiny thing when when the plan we assembled was probably better than anything recent shiny. So so I think it's a point for us to be careful with each other to be sure, hey, don't let recent things be receive undue focus compared to to the big picture of where we were going. Okay. Okay, man. That that's a great feedback. Okay. Justin Omkar, anything? Yeah, I would agree. Like, uh, I think I've probably given some suggestions that may have like taken you. But I don't think you. I think you justifiably were like took the suggestion and maybe I think we stayed on schedule. Um, so I think we were good. I don't, I guess I don't, uh, we went too far. Um, yeah. I'm, I think the only thing I can think of is probably also schedule related and, and I'm not sure that, uh, this is necessarily something on you. Um, but I guess we're, have we, have we done a checkup on like where we are on schedule and, um, if we need to readjust, uh, any of the dates or anything like that, or, for projects, maybe that would be worthwhile doing periodically. Yes, I, I think that that's an important thing to do. It is, it is, and uh, uh, we haven't seen that. I uh, should I open uh, the proposal where I actually uh, uh, propose the goals we had or uh, the way we were going to do, and then compare it with what with what we have done. Uh, so, Rishab, I generally keep on following that particular thing. Like uh, I. Uh, follow up the agendas for meeting and uh, I also check on the proposal. So I think we are definitely on the track, but I'm not sure of the timeline, like what, uh, what timeline exactly we need, what milestone we need to achieve with what time exactly. But we are definitely on the track, correct track, yeah. So, 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 so yeah, I guess I'd say that's only really like 
if, if someone is tracking it, if that was already you, like that's already good. And I would also say like, yeah, but just we need to check are, like if, if the are, time time stamps are correct, like uh, we are not running too much behind the schedule. We need to check that. Yeah. And it's a software project too. So I mean, software projects, you're not going to be a hundred percent accurate okay. with what you thought a month ago, or maybe even a week ago sometimes with uh, how long it actually takes. So that's just the okay. reality. So sometimes you just need to readjust. So that's kind of where that cadence of maybe, are we in the right spot or do we need to readjust? But it seems like we're moving pretty well. Okay. Okay. Yes. <laughs> so, so, uh, so yes, ma'am. I, I like the idea of looking at the timeline. I tend to ignore timelines. So we may want to make a systematic thing in these, maybe one, one of the sessions in a week where we remind ourselves the timeline was this, are we okay with deviating from the timeline or not? Because I've, I've been totally oblivious to timeline thinking instead about task and fo you know, what we want, what, what I think we should get done, but timeline, you put effort into thinking about the timeline and we would honor that effort, I think, by looking at it and deciding, shall we accept this as a deviation from timeline or shall we you know, redefine the timeline, which is perfectly okay. So uh, according to me, what my expectation for phase one was that I would um, the fix, the, the, the redundant fetch fix, because that was something uh, for, the, for that, I attempted the fix even before uh, the GSOC, the community bonding phase started. So I was, uh, so what I thought was that I would uh, write the benchmarks. I, I had one benchmark, I would write more benchmarks and I would possibly try to discover more uh, issues, performance related issues and side by side, try to uh, find a solution uh, on how to implement those in the plugin. But uh, I think where I've lagged is that uh, I've spent too much time uh, around benchmarks and um, I think my uh, my goal was to find a difference. Even if there isn't, my goal was to find a difference and I'm not sure if that's uh, how much that's helpful. Maybe it's helpful to a point, but uh, if you overdo it, then you uh, maybe you'll, uh, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll try to uh, see results where I, where they're not, where they're not existing. So uh, that's one uh, one concern I have with myself, and I think I'm going to change that uh, when I'm uh, doing the benchmarking thing. And also, uh, I think I need to um, maybe I need to put a stop at where I uh, I go with uh, with the results I have, uh, and parallelly try to focus on the fact that we uh, need. Uh, what's more important is that the existing results we have, we, we have a system to add them inside the plugin. And that's going to be, uh, uh, that's going to take a lot of time because uh, when I was planning the timeline, I was not aware of how much time it would take. I thought that it's going to uh, coding a, a certain task would not take too much time. I was not aware how much time after the coding process would take. That is the testing of it and then taking it to production. The, that whole process, I, I'm, I was not aware while, while I was writing the timeline. And with the git fetch issue, what I've seen is that it, it would take considerable time uh, in, in this case, in, in the, for this plugin, for this repository. So, uh, so, so I think there has to be a fine uh, balance between uh, how much I research, because I, th I feel that this project is uh, not 50%, but it's uh, somewhere around the research we're doing, uh, exploring, and 50% it's using that to uh, code things. So, uh, so it's really uh, important that I balance both of them. I think I could not balance this time for this phase, coding was less and uh, research or finger, figuring out uh, ways to consolidate the results I have, profiling and then uh, looking into uh, how the operation is working also. Uh, so I do explore the code. I do try to understand as much co code as I can. It's not like I'm not reading code, but I, um, I, I believe that I did not, um, I should have find, found a way to, um, the heuristics we're talking I, I was thinking that at least I would have a prototype uh, by the end of phase one, uh, which I could not, because I think that I spent too much time on uh, benchmarks, uh, because I feel even after spending too much time, 
what uh, clear observations we have is with uh, the benchmark results of git fetch is that jgit the size repository and the jgit uh, thing we have and with ls remover it's 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 not much of a difference but i think that i uh, i've i've spent much more time to uh, find more things so uh, if that's a good thing i think to a limit it's good but not at the cost of uh, not providing a solution which is actually what we want ultimately for this project so uh, i think that's uh, one of the biggest concerns i have and i would uh, so with tracking what i want to do is that um, i think that would help me more to um, stay uh, within the line and code as much as i research for the benchmarks so uh, yes that's i that's what i feel uh, for the phase 1 and uh, yeah yeah i mean i think some of the beginning of this is like some of what you said is the nature of you're teeing everything up you're bootstrapping all of this stuff to gain advantages later too so i yeah it's probably a lot of nature of the yeah. beast kind of thing and uh yeah you don't know what you don't know so yes yes and that's true maybe all of uh, the experiences i've gained through this phase one i it'll be easy for me to uh, uh in this phase two when i'm exploring benchmarks or i'm coding stuff yeah i i like i'm so, i'm very interested in and like the idea of that sizing heuristic being a good coding task and a good coding task to include in phase two. i think that that has real potential it's real code uh it's something you can do while we're making progress on other things so yeah i like that a lot um balancing that which probably has very specific concrete things with exploration of are there any other operations besides fetch where jgit is substantially slower or substantially faster than cli git uh, because right now we've we've you've benchmarked two or three and one of the benchmarks says yes clear difference the other one says no not a clear difference the question is then all right which are should we continue writing more benchmarks or rather is it put you focus fully on have you folk you choose to focus fully on the heuristics and using what we've learned from that one benchmark and i i don't i don't have a good answer on do both or do one i think i'm open to either either process whichever you prefer ideally i'd like to do both because uh, if we don't explore then uh, then i'm not sure how much uh, we'd like we would we would uh, we could cover at the end of the project so i would not like to stop the uh, uh, re uh, researching into the uh, different areas of this plugin but but then again focus on the coding task as much so um uh, the last question i have uh, is uh, so now i'm going to write uh, ideally uh, either i'm going to add uh, the size estimator um, part of the code uh, to the git scm telescope or i could create a new class that's i i i'll uh, work on that more first i i have to give more time to that thought but uh, i wanted to ask since i would have to design a class and what would be good design principles i should maybe read about or if you guys could give me some advice on how i should design such a class where i'm uh, i i have heuristics and i want to i'm not very sure of the thing i'm delivering but i have some kind of an estimate so this is a very new uh, type of uh, i would say a functionality for me to give so i i just like if, if there's some possible uh, advice or maybe uh, things you would like me to explore before i write this class because i think if i have some if i read some good principle and then i try to code them it will be easier for us to then review it and it, the the process will be faster i think that's the right way to do it so uh, yeah i wish i could say i'm a good designer rishab i'm not i'm hoping that justin and omkar are because my 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 usual technique is do something very badly and iterate on it until it becomes somewhat less bad that's what <laughs> i was thinking now but i i thought maybe if if there's something which uh, is essential when we are trying to create a class like this or 
something like this. Uh, okay. get, get SCM telescope for me feels like a great pattern and a great place okay. for you to explore it. I think that is exactly the concept. And if you, if you read the SCM API documentation yeah. as written by Stephen, uh, he has a, a page called Consumers for Consumers of the SCM API. You can read more about his strategy and why he did get SCM Telescope, what his concept okay. was. So, so that consumer documentation on SCM API is a really, really good read. And, okay. and therefore, you're like reading it. from somebody who actually is a good designer, as opposed to listening to me, who is, we know, not a good designer, right? I, I'm, I'm pretty solid at maintenance programming and pretty solid at testing. I'm not really great at designing new code. So, but no, Steve, that was like a maybe? super good gem. Like, uh, I think what you hit on is is kind of what I was going to say too. I think different code bases kind of sometimes tend towards different uh, practices and stuff like that too. Java's generally has good practices, and, and there's like books you can read on on this and stuff like that. But I think I'd agree with Mark that take a look at what you have for this take a look at other classes that have been designed in here that might do something somewhat similar. Uh, and you'll be able to potentially snip some of those things from there, but also combine that with iteration. Cause you're not going to, I don't know. I think as many times as I've tried to design classes, like I usually find something or another thing when I'm testing it or writing unit tests or something like that, that I might change some stuff up anyway. So, uh, Thank you. so yeah. Okay. Yeah. That sounds that sounds okay. I'll I'll, I'll start with uh, exploring the Git SCM class, uh, be focusing on it first. The SCM telescope and reading the consumer guide, and then maybe come up with a prototype, and then we can discuss the design. Maybe it's not the right time to ask the question. So yeah, I I yeah. wish it were. I wish I had the answer, but the answer I have, anything I give, I would be making it up, and I'm sure what I would be making up is much much less quality than what Stephen has already described. Okay, my, but I think it's 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 great that we already have a class which is doing similar. Uh, uh, it's designed for the similar purpose, so I think uh, I should look at that first and then, uh, yeah, comment. Okay, so um, so uh, okay, just one last thing before ending the meeting. I uh, I was always planning to document uh, the process we've uh, gone through for the benchmarking. I never did it. I could not do it, but now. Um, what I was thinking was to create a document which uh, uh, which basically acts as a repository of the results we have and uh, as, a, as a public, um, uh, I would say doc document, which would have the results and the observations or the process we've gone through for each of the operations. Because uh, I, I would say that even if we uh, implement uh, some of the features using those uh, observations, it's it's important for us to see where those ob observations came from, so that if there's an issue uh, in simulate in future, we actually know how we got to that point. So uh, yeah, that's also one big I, I would consider it's a very essential task. Yeah. Contributing dot a doc is your destination. Yes, yes, Mark. Great. That's where I go. Okay. Thank you guys. Thank you for giving your time. Uh, just, 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 just again. So, uh, are we planning to include that OS level testing, like environment level testing that Mark mentioned yesterday uh, in phase two? Yes, uh, I would say benchmarking with benchmarking, as I've already mentioned in the presentation, we would widen the scope. I with okay. Uh, the start. Okay, I haven't discussed uh, with the benchmarking. I think we can discuss it in the next meeting as well. With yeah. benchmarking, uh, I want to focus on the repository structure. That is the uh, commit history, number of branches, and um, other parameters in the size, uh, yeah. keeping the size constant if that's possible. Mm -hmm. Then uh, the second thing would be different platforms. I haven't focused enough on how different uh, the operations are working on Windows versus Linux. I would like to focus on that. And then once I have observations from that uh, experiment, I would move on to uh, the uh, suggestion given by Mark to run it on different platforms on. Uh, the infrastructure, Jenkins.io. So, well, uh, yes, yes, ma'am. Aren't we going to get that? We're already running the, the JMH benchmarks that you've created on different platforms on ci.jenkins.io now. We can't uh, see the results nearly as conveniently as what you've, what, you've, what you've shown in your environment. 
we don't have the JMH plugin. We don't have that benefit, but but they are running, and so so I yeah I, I think That's, I think it's yeah. it's not it, it, it we've already made progress on it, and and yes, we can make more progress. So the pro the progress I would have to make is just to analyze them. I did not take both uh, of the results side by side and analyze them. That's I something see. I missed. Yes, okay. so I, I would do that. But Mark, uh, with that, okay, I'll, I'll discuss in the Gated channel. I think the time is over. It's it's a small thing. I'll discuss it in the Gated channel. Thank you, guys. Thank you so much. All right. Thanks, everybody. Bye -bye.